Today I've got this little Ford in which hasn't had a thorough clean in quite a long time so I've got quite a few new products that have been kindly sent to test out in this video and I'm going to be giving you my honest thoughts on them throughout this process. First up I'm cleaning the wheels and I've got three chemicals to do so. So I first got Mild Deep Release diluted to about 20% in the IK sprayer to clean the arches. I'm using Shiana Gloss Huel on the wheel faces and barrels and then the Gion tire cleaner. All these chemicals did a very good job and were really nice to work with. Huel managed to remove the brake dust that had been on there for quite a long time. The only thing that it couldn't tackle was the really embedded brake dust within the wheel barrel. It got rid of the loose brake dust but the wheels would have realistically needed to come off to give those a deeper clean, likely using acid. The Gion tire cleaner did a very good job. It did require a second hit to get them 100% clean but I was happy that it managed to pull out a lot of grime from the tyres and give them a very good clean so that the dressing that I was going to be applying later on had the best chance of lasting. After I rinsed down the wheels, I did add some protection to them in the form of Strana Gloss Glatt. This left some very nice water behaviour behind and should help to make the wheels a little bit easier to clean in future. There was years worth of dirt and grime in the door shuts on this car so I first gave them a pre-wash again using mild heat release at 20% and then blasted that down to remove the bulk of the grime. I then went in again with the citrus and a mitt and some brushes to give all these areas a thorough clean. And then once I'd finished up, I did just shut the doors and then run low pressure water through the panel gaps to flush all that product out without any chance of getting the interior wet. The next step was the pre-wash and again use that mild deep citrus at 20% in the IK sprayer. I left the product to dwell for a few minutes before rinsing it away with high pressure and I was happy that it did remove the bulk of the grime. I followed up with a 1 in 10 mixture of Detail Bugs Ice Bug in the Snow Foam Cannon and let that soak on there for about 10 minutes whilst I was preparing the buckets for the contact wash. And this didn't remove that much more grime than the previous step but it just helped to soak the remaining dirt and make it a little bit easier to clean during the contact wash.
The shampoo that I'm using today is ADBL Tangy, which is mildly acidic, but when you dilute it in the bucket, it is very close to pH neutral. This is a really nice and foamy shampoo. You do need a decent amount of it in the bucket, so usually around sort of 50 to 75 mil, but the experience of using it is very nice. It also doesn't have a tendency to dry out as much as other shampoos that I've tried, which is particularly useful when I'm filming, as it does take me a little bit longer to get around the car. I also used a collection of brushes to access the more intricate areas of the car, topped up with a bit of that mild deep citrus. Once I'd rinsed and dried the car, I then moved on to the chemical decon stage, first starting off with Stjana Goss's tar remover. I don't think that this is the most potent tar remover in the world, and a few tar spots did require a second hit. However, it definitely is one of the better smelling ones, and I think on milder tar spots, it doesn't have any trouble whatsoever. The main issue with this vehicle was the amount of iron fallout contamination as it is parked on a road near a train station so there was tiny little orange flecks all over the vehicle. It was probably the worst iron fallout contamination that I have personally seen. To tackle this I went in with Garage Therapy's Iron Oxide as this is probably the most potent iron fallout remover that I have. It also does have the benefit of having some of the elements of Garage Therapy's Decon Shampoo built into it so you can agitate it safely and this just really helps to remove as much of that iron contamination as possible. On some areas, including the roof and bonnet, I did actually have to do this process twice as there was a really heavy amount of contamination at this stage and I didn't want to move on to claying without having properly tackled it first. To remove the remaining bonded contamination and make the paintwork feel as smooth and as clean as possible, I went in with this Jana Gloss clay bar and the new rinseless wash by PS and used this as a clay lubricant. And it can actually be diluted to 1 in 128, so it's a very economical clay lubricant. The clay bar felt nice and slippy on the panel, so I was happy that it was providing enough lubrication. And by the end of this process, I was very, very happy with the results, and the car's paintwork just felt completely different and looked miles better as well. After I'd cleared the vehicle, I did give it another once over with the mitt and that ADBL Tangy shampoo that I used previously, just to remove any contaminants that might have been lifted but not collected by the clay bar. And then I rinsed off the car and dried it as normal. The next product I'm using here is Stjarnagos Shara and this is their all-in-one polish. So there are three elements to this kind of product. So firstly, it's going to have light cutting ability. Now I say light because it is only going to remove very minor sort of imperfections. The product also has fillers, so those are going to help to hide the imperfections that are still left in the paintwork. It's a temporary fix and it will eventually wear away, but it does provide some visual improvement in the meantime. And the final element is that it does have some protection built in as well. So I'm using the product here on a dual action polisher on a white chemical guys pad 
However, most people probably will be using this by hand. I just prefer to use it by machine as it's more efficient and less exhausting. It's really hard to demonstrate much of a visual improvement on camera on this white car. However, in person, I do think it took the gloss up just a notch and helped to make the paintwork just look a little bit brighter as well. So the all-in-one polish that I used previously is going to add some protection to the car. However, to add some extra protection and make sure that it was going to last as long as possible, I went in with Strana Gloss Parlor, which is their spray sealant. Now this works quite synergistically with the all-in-one polish as you actually do use some of the same sealant technology. This was an incredibly easy product to use and left behind a nice slick surface. You just apply it with one microfiber and then buff it off with a second or flip your cloth if it's not too saturated. It's designed to last for three to five months and that's going to depend on how well the surface was prepped and also what kind of conditions the car is subjected to during that time. Another notable bonus of this product is that it did smell absolutely fantastic. I can't really put my finger on what the scent was, but it did make the process of applying it a little bit nicer, which I did appreciate. On the tyres and trim I'm using Strana Gloss Gummy, which again was really easy to use, there's a little bit of a theme here. I just applied it using a microfiber pad onto the plastic trim and then using a foam applicator onto the tyres. On the trim it left a nice matte finish and actually didn't require any buffing back with a microfiber towel to remove any streaks, it just went on really evenly and nicely. On the tyres I'd say it left kind of a semi-gloss finish, so it wasn't the glossiest product I've ever tried but I wouldn't say it was a satin finish either and the cream consistency of the products meant that you really didn't need that much so I do think it's a pretty economical one as well. 